internet, thanks for tuning in back to our channel. My name is Dustin Dolby and today I'm going to run you through my workflow for how to capture a nice beer pour advertising shot just using an entry level DSLR and speed lights. And I'm going to show you the three lights I would set up at home just to capture something like this reliably so that the motion's kind of carved out beautifully and you can just have a ton of fun pouring a million times and trying to capture a nice magic advertising moment. Maybe you're shooting this for a portfolio, maybe you're shooting this for a brand or anything in between. It's a fun thing to invoke motion into a studio lighting setup, and that's exactly what we're going to explore today. So let's dive in. So since we're shooting something glossy, something glassy, like if we're shooting a pint glass, a tall bottle, anything linear, I love to start with this. You see me bring it out a lot. It's an 8 by 36 inch strip box. It'll do a good job with a speed light in it of sort of accentuating the glassware shape since it's so tall and just defining it, and then we can tweak it from there. And we're shooting at f13, so we should have a Pretty sharp shot, ISO 100, 1 200th of a second. So we're doing a good job of showing off the shape of the pint glass. The top of the can, the face of the can, not so much, but we are catching the aluminum head, which will define nicely because the pour is gonna come out of there, so that's gonna be a very important area in a quick moment. But we have to bring in something else here for the can, obviously. Now I'm setting up a second speed light strip box above us, eight by 36 inches. And most strip boxes can collapse vertically like this. And that creates a really nice overhead source of light we can use to make our can look a little better when we're pouring it. Now I'm gonna bring that even further with a diffuser. I use a diffuser a lot here, these nylon ones. And I'm just gonna create a roof over our set. It's gonna be a little rickety, but I'll just balance it there. And that'll help us even further kind of make this a little less harsh and just get a ton of coverage over the can. We can still see the lens through to the pint glass, so that's all good. And just one other modifier here, I'm going to really recycle our light as much as possible and bounce some back into the scene. Again, just using a clamp and a piece of foam core. So I still have room here to reach in and pour a beer. Let's take a test shot. But now our beer is going to be much more kind of surrounded in beautiful light sources and have a much better chance of looking half decent. So looking much cleaner now, a lot of soft light making the can look beautiful and kind of playing within the metallics. And we're getting a better canvas to start to pour this beer on. You can almost see the beer pouring out of here. You almost want it to happen now. It'll look nice and brightly lit and beautiful. All right, guys, I'm down here at the back of the set. I think you can see me. I'm turning on our third speed light and it has a grid on the back. And a grid is just going to make it radially glow. So it'll light up this nice white wall behind us and we'll get some aesthetic happening, a nice aesthetic background. And that'll look really clean in just a moment once we bring out our beer ski. There is a speed light visible through the glass, but that's not gonna matter once we fill the glass up, so I'm just focusing on getting a nice centered radial glow for now. Hopefully you caught our video last week, how to photograph a classic beer and pint glass on a catalog background. We built that up here in the studio really quick and it got some positive feedback. That's more of a catalog system. This is a little more flexible for pouring a beer and getting frozen motion. But we've now completed with that third light our systematic approach to capturing this. And you do want a system you truly believe in before you start pouring your liquids, which is just naturally chaotic. And I'll link all the gear you can see here below in our description if you want to check it out. Just real quick food for thought. If you did want to have a color punch in the background of your shot, it's just a matter of bringing out a blue gel or whatever gel you wish, putting it in the back of your grid, which will give you a punch of color. And then I would also bring out a black card and just block off the top of our top light if you're in a small home studio space so it doesn't spill onto the background. Otherwise, you're going to get something like this with your color spot. You want to block off the top light and end up with something like this. I think I like the 45 degree angles compared to something like really straight on. I like when it shows a bit of the face of the aluminum. Mmm. So I'm getting a good pour. Let's take a look at a couple of these exposures here. And I'm just looking for a good combination of like a strong head of froth, but also a nice pour, uh, particularly with a bit of light play. 
going through it, hopefully. Like, maybe something like this. We have, you know, the light going through the stream of beer, which looks nice. In our original image, I think that kind of caught our eye a bit. And it's nice seeing the color reinforced through the background of that liquid. Because it makes it all look like a very smooth, almost composited scene. But it's very realistic because you have that light play happening. Now what we're going to do is take some of our favorite exposures. We'll probably edit this one from our test session. And we'll, we might shoot a few more, but we'll bring this into Photoshop and I'll show you a few of the things I would do just to make sure that it's looking its cleanest and ready for export. And before I do that, let me quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. So Skillshare, if you don't already know, is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators like people on this channel. I use Skillshare and I use it to explore new skills all the time, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in the creativity. Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons and a class project, and that's something I like about it. It's kind of different and it's a more drawn out style of learning that I personally enjoy. It's curated specifically for learning, so no ads. They're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused wherever you are. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in our description will actually get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. And I recommend product photography, style and edit for stronger images, and advanced lighting, three ways to level up your product photography. Both are by Tabitha Park, check them out. All right, everybody. So here we are inside of Photoshop and I selected our teal background image from our test shots. I thought it was the most vibrant and nice. We took a few other shots, but I like the magical way this poured through. And I just want to retouch a few, you know, blemishes, unsightly things in the image, just so you're not distracted by anything. And you can just, you know, enjoy the few simple aspects of the image. Because when you're shooting a heroic image, you don't want little things to detract from the focus, generally speaking, right? So I'm going to duplicate my layer to start. And on a Windows computer, I do that by hitting Control J. So once I've duplicated my layer, let's zoom in to our suspects here. I'm not loving this foamy nonsense on the front of the pint, as well as some other things. So I'm going to hit J to bring out my patch tool. And I use the patch tool quite a lot here. And it's just a matter of making little selections around something you don't like and sampling it from somewhere you do like. And I'll just swiftly do this live on location and we don't have to get rid of everything but you know just down here was generally a little distracting weird pattern going on there and you know usually when I'm shooting on my own accord I get pretty deep into this and just clean up certain areas obviously you want things clean in camera one tip is if you're ever dragging along a straight surface like this the edge of the frame I like to hold shift because the patch tool gets a little weird towards the edges of products and let's just do a little before and after and see how we clean that up. A more major incident would be something like this that goes through a pattern or a texture. Because then it gets a little trickier and I'll only do one of these. I won't totally clean these up. You just have to match up the lines, something like that. And sometimes you don't get it perfectly perfect. But you get it nicer than it was a moment ago. So I clean this up and that up and, you know, a few other things. But a general little going over of our pint glass is usually a good idea, especially when there's liquids and such random stuff happening. Now is this overexposed over here? What do we think? I'm going to go to the eyedropper tool and just grab this color and it is 93% white. We're not overexposed here. I think we're probably a little underexposed over on this side and I might counteract that slightly. So I'm going to make a curves layer. I use a lot of curves layers and I'm sure people here are familiar with that. I'm going to do a brightening effect and then quickly control I invert the layer mask. So now I have a brightening effect that's not doing anything. I brought out a white brush and at a low flow, making my brush subtle, I'm just going to subtly flow that in on the counter side here and just click anywhere I think this needs a little kick of light to match the brightness or not match it, but just counteract the underwhelmingness of before and kind of bring it up to speed. Pretty subtle tweak and I'm trying not to affect the background at all there. So I'm going to paint a black brush here to make sure I'm not affecting the background with that. Sometimes when I need to brighten or darken something in my product shots, I will use a mask selection just to make sure I'm not darkening or affecting the background. Like here, this side of the beer, it's kind of distracting because it's kind of bright randomly. Just as an example of when to use a mask, I might make a mask with a polygonal lasso tool. So I hit L to bring that up and then go to the polygonal lasso tool. Now I'm just gonna make a straight line up the side of our pint glass. I'll get a little crude. I won't go full out. But something simple. We'll just tell Photoshop where the pint glass is. 
Now I can get crude towards the interior, really crude. Complete that selection. And instead of a new layer, actually, let's make a curves effect. And it'll be a, a darkening effect. But we only want that to apply to over on this side of the image. So I'm going to group that curves effect, control G, and alt click layer mask, which gives it a black layer mask. Now the point of doing that two step layer mask is this original shape tells it you can only apply that effect to the right of this line, be in this area. And the second mask is going to do something more important in that we're going to only apply that effect, not crudely over here, but only here kind of subtly. So now we're confident with this effect that we're not at all affecting the background thanks to the two layer mask system. And we're only darkening that so that when we zoom out, our eye isn't kind of going to it. That's a random little example of something I might apply using a mask. Of course, that area would look cleaner if I did, you know, more patchwork over here and there. So the last thing I might just clean up is the can itself. So let's go to our retouch layer and we fixed our brightness issue slightly. And I just want to make sure the can has you know, no blemishes on it itself. It probably has a bit of dust and things I'd look out for. And with slight textures, sometimes you get a little bit of glitching here and there. Things like this dark area with the patch tool. So sometimes I switch it up and use the clone stamp tool, which does a similar thing, but replaces areas in the opposite direction. So I start with the source, but the patch tool, you start with the problem area. And it usually is pretty good and it's my preferred tool. Here's another example of using something linear by holding shift because I'm at the edge of the frame. But a quick before and after shows you, you know, it's kind of worth it to clean up your layers, especially in really blemished areas, just so you have a more, you know, unique, simple viewing experience where you can take everything seriously and just not be distracted. So thank you so much for hanging out with us and making a beer pour today in the studio. It was a ton of fun. Make sure to connect with us around the internet on Instagram. You can connect with us below. Leave us a comment or a question. We'd love to respond to you and hear from you. And make sure, as usual, to thumb up this video and subscribe to spread it around the internet. And thank you all so much. If you're curious about the stand that's holding up this pint glass here, it's our custom bottle support plate. And we use it for hoisting up, you know, bottles, cans, pint glasses, anything with a small diameter on a common light stand for photography. So links below if you want to pick one of those up and support the channel. Thanks to each and every one of you, and I'll catch you next time here on Workflow. Ciao.